Ahoy folks, and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. So today we are taking a look at the Psyker. I know it's been quite a while since we've done a Psyker build, so uh, we're going to try and do a few in a row here. So this is the uh, the Epirian Smite build. It is uh, known and loved or hated by all. It's a very, very simple build, very, very powerful, and with the unlocked and loaded patch, it's kind of just made it more silly. So let's dive in and have a look at what we've got. So for our primary weapon, we're using the Blaze Force Sword, the Demios Mark IV, to be more precise. And for the modifiers, as you will be no doubt surprised as ever, uh, mobility is our dump stat because I don't like mobility. <laughs> yeah, so screw mobility and everything else is uh, at 80. So we have damage, warp resistance, first target and finesse, all at 80, and mobility at 59. And just so people understand this. I know I've said it in the past, but I haven't said it in any recent videos. So if you look at this, these modifiers, mobility being at 59 or being at 61 is actually a UI error. Um, weapons cannot go above 380. So they have said, if you see a, a differential of 1% of either way, it is probably a UI error. Uh, and that is probably at 60, okay? So if you ever get a weapon that adds up to anything over 380, yeah, it's a pure UI error. It doesn't exist. No weapon can go above 380. So just thought I'd remind everyone that because some people do get quite confused about that still. And um, yeah, don't worry, 380 is still the max. Anyway, let's move on. Perk-wise, we're going for Carapace and Maniac. Carapace is going to help us deal with crushers and maulers, and Maniac is going to help us deal with those pesky specials. And for the blessings, we're going with Uncanny Strikes, which gives us plus 24% rending on enemy weak spot hit for 3.5 seconds, stacking five times. And we're also taking Deflector, one of the best uh, blessings that the Psyker gets hold of, which basically allows you to Jedi mind trick your way into blocking bullets. Uh, so, Deflector, this weapon blocks both melee and ranged attacks. Additionally, block cost is reduced by 30%. It's a nice little Brucey bonus we have there on Deflector. And it literally just works like this. You are blocking, you now block ranged attacks. Now, with the Demios, the reason I love it is because of this. It has a huge amount of stagger on it, and uncharged, it's about three hits the killer crusher but charged it does a ridiculous amount of damage and even more so when you have all five stacks of uncanny strikes rolling it is a ridiculously accurate sword that does a lot of damage and the reason we're taking this over the dueling sword is well one that and two it gives us a hell of a lot of survivability so this is going to help us a lot. Right, let's take a look at the staff. So we are using the Surge Staff. Well, previously known as the Surge Staff, it's now known as the Electrokinetic Force Staff. No mana Mark Six. It's a Surge Staff. And the modifiers, how we're using it is damage, warp resistant, charge rate, and critical bonus, all at 80, and quell speed at 60. If you want to, you can, I don't know, drop down warp resistance, but I prefer quell speed. We can already quell very quickly with this build. We don't really care about it. And now for the perks, we're going with carapace and unyielding. Again, that's to help us deal with the pesky heavy armor and also unyielding to deal with bosses, bulwarks and reapers. So this is uh, going to give us a lot of boss damage and basically be able to crack those hard targets. We're not too worried about the lesser stuff because that will just get mauled with our staff normally and also with our talents. And for the blessings, we're going with Warp Nexus. Gain between 5 and 20% critical chance based on current levels of peril. And we're also taking Warp Flurry, which gives us minus 8.5% charge time on chained secondary attacks, stacks three times. So we're not taking Surge anymore, which we were only taking that for... Hang on, let me dig it out. 
we were oh, that's not what i wanted to look at uh masteries that's what i want to look god damn all these goddamn menus there we go we were taking surge that's not surge there's surge purely for the increased crit but it works out better this way you know if you don't try you don't know and for some reason i have four points left over uh, okay whatever game whatever so we've warped nexus we are gaining crit based on our current level of perils and warp flurry is going to allow us to basically instantly charge these staff up to max as you can see as we stack it up it is almost fully charged by the time we can actually press the button again after the animation so at three stacks the staff is fully charged on every hit i do like the surge star it requires zero aiming just a little fun staff to play with really right so that's the staff now we'll look at the curios we are taking two 17 percent toughness curios with five percent toughness 4% combat ability regeneration and 20% damage resistance to gunners. Now, gunners are one of the most dangerous things to us in the game because they can shred you like nobody's business. Also, why we're taking Deflector. So, we're running at 60% damage resistance to gunners. It doesn't work out to exactly 60%, obviously, because there is diminishing returns. It kind of works out to more... I think it's about 45%. I know it, I know it doesn't make sense, but it's just how they've done their maths. So we're taking two 70% toughness ones and one max stamina blessing. Now, the reason we're taking the stamina blessing is to allow us to block more. And as it's already reducing the cost down by 30%, this is also going to allow us to use deflector more and also be able to dodge more. So as you can see, we have a lot more stamina, which is going to allow us to block, dodge, and get out of the goddamn way. So stamina is quite useful to our sort of all-round defense, really. And on that, that cure, we're taking the same thing as all the others. Uh, toughness, combat ability regeneration, and damage resistance to gunners. Right. So that's the items we're using. Let's jump in and have a look at the talents. So we'll start off here on the right. We're taking metal. Critical hits replenish 5% toughness. Also grants 5% increased movement speed for 4 seconds, stacks 3 times. Now, the major change from this is we've gotten rid of that toughness boost there and we put it into metal. And then we're coming down over here for Soul Stealer, replenish 7.5% toughness on warp attack kill, which is going to be most of our attacks. Quietitude, replenish 5% toughness for each 10% of perils quelled. Perilous combustion, killing an elite or a specialist enemy applies three stacks of soul blaze to nearby enemies, causing damage over time. And then we're taking Battle Meditation, a 10% chance to quell 10% perils on kill into a toughness boost, into smite. I know this is a point of contention for a lot of people. Half of you love it, half of you hate it. it you know, Smite is made, made to be used for dealing with mixed hordes. It isn't your go-to, I'm going to use this all the time. But dealing with mixed hordes, this thing is absolutely goddamn amazing. Because it's going to lock everything in place and it's going to damage them disgustingly with this build. And we're also taking Lightning Storm, increases the number of times your smite jumps by one. Into Peril Resistance, then Wildfire, when an enemy dies while affected by your Soul Blaze, nearby enemies each gain up to four stacks of Soul Blaze. They cannot gain more stacks than the dying enemy had. Psychonetics Aura, decreases the ability cooldown for you and allies in coherency by 5% on the Elite or Specialist kill. This is going to allow us to use Venting Shriek, uh, Venting Shriek just ridiculous amounts of times, especially with the cooldown uh, combat ability regeneration on the curios and then we go into the toughness damage reduction picking up seer's presence plus 10 percent cooldown reduction on abilities for you and eyes incoherency again allowing us to use venting shriek a lot more into toughness damage reduction into one with the warp gain toughness damage reduction of 10 to 33 percent based on your current perils we're going to be riding perils really really high we're going to be sitting around 95% at all times if we can. And then into Venting Shriek. This is our one, get out of jail free card. And two, the way we're going to be spreading Soul Blaze around and stagger things. 
Unleash a wave of warp energy that staggers enemies in front of you and quells 50% peril. Base cooldown is 30 seconds. And then into Becoming Eruption, Venting Shriek now decreases peril generation by 1% for each enemy hit, stacking up to 25 times. So we can have 25% peril generation if we hit a big group of things. And then into Creeping Flames, Venting Shriek applies 1-6 to six stacks of Soul Blaze to the target, uh, to hog targets hit based on your current peril. It works out at 85% you will be hitting them with 6 stacks. But... I usually write it around 95 because I'm used to fiddling around with the Psyker, but 85 is a good place to be. And then down here, we're going to look at the left first. So we're going to get minus 5% peril generation into Solidarity, increase Quell speed by 30%. That's why we don't really care about it on the weapon. Toughness damage reduction, plus 5% toughness damage reduction into Empiric Resolve, minus 40% peril generation, Minus 30% toughness replenishment. So it's kind of a tit for tat with this. Again, this is why we don't care about the, the generation on the weapon. And then over here onto the right, 5% critical hit chance into kinetic deflection. While below critical perils, blocking an attack causes you to gain perils instead of losing stamina. Gained peril is 25% of the blocked attack stamina cost which is also why we are taking a Stamina Curio and why we're taking Deflection on the weapon. Because not only is Deflection great, Ability Cost is reduced by 30% as well, so these all stack really nicely together. And then down through the middle, we're going to be taking the Health Boost into Warp Rider, deal up to 20% damage increase as your perils increase, into the Toughness Boost, into Empowered Psionics. Now this is the talent that makes Smite incredibly dirty you have a 7.5% chance to empower your next Blitz. And for that, it's Empowered Smite, plus 200% damage and 50% faster spread between enemies. And then Overpowering Souls, guaranteed chance to gain Empowered Sonics on Elite Kill, and then Charged Up, you can now hold up to three stacks of Empowered Psionics. So the build's pretty self-explanatory, really. It's use your staff to kill most things when you've got a mixed horde coming you switch over to your blitz and it just starts shredding everything once you hit about 95 you venting shriek as you can see it locks everything down now with smite you can take it to 100 and it will automatically stop but if you do go that route, you don't get the stagger. So if you stop this before you hit 100, let's just take it up to, say, like 80. You actually stagger and push everything back. So it's a good little trick to know that you can actually make a little bit of space for yourself. And of course, you want to be hammering that venting shriek when you get up to about 85, 90, just to be laying those soul blaze stacks around you and as you can see as we kill stuff there is a good chance that we are uh, purging 10 percent perils so we can keep this going a little bit longer than we're really supposed to so you don't really want to want to be wasting this on just pox walker hordes i mean unless your team needs the breathing room you can pretty much just go at it with your staff or with your sword and just lay down some damage. What you really want to be using on is mixed hordes. When there's trash mobs, rages, specials, armor, that's when you want to be laying down smite to let your team deal with what's going on. This isn't your one button does all build. You will have to switch between your weapons quite a lot, depending on the situation. And for that, really, it's just kind of, you just kind of get the flow of how it works. You, you know, when you want to be using your sword, when you want to be backing off, and the block push is actually a block push on this. Always makes me laugh. When you want to get out your staff and actually lay down some damage on something big, like a monstrosity or a crusher pack. 
but the more you play with it, the more you'll kind of get the flow of when to use what. Uh, it's a very fun build. I really enjoy it. It's pretty much my go-to build for the Psyker. And uh, it's it's pretty damn effective. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do, please do like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, if you want to, please do suggest some builds you'd like to see in the comments. I'm always happy to take on suggestions. So until the next one, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you later.